video is just about the e-cell and in particular how changing the conditions affect it. So the e-cell, also known as the EMF, is basically just a measure of how far from dynamic equilibrium a cell reaction lies. The more positive the EMF, the further forwards the equilibrium is and therefore the more likely it is that the reaction will occur. The reaction may not occur however if the activational energy is extremely high or if the reaction is so slow that we basically just disregard any reaction is occurring at all. And an example of this is the decomposition of graphite in diamond. Technically it's happening but we don't really say it is because well I doubt there's going to be no diamonds anytime soon. So EMF is affected by three factors and these are current, concentration and temperature. So the first one I said was current. If you allow current to flow through the cell, gradually this will cause the EMF to drop until it reaches zero and at this point the cell is at equilibrium. The second factor was concentration and for this I'm using the example here. So the first thing you do is you write out both of the half cells as reductions on the same line and as always we put the reducing agent on the left but this time we'll separate the two half equations by writing E cell and this can be demonstrated here. Once we wrote that out we just apply Le Chatelier's principle to whatever can be applied and here it's just the copper 2 which is increased and as this increases then the equilibrium shifts to the right and that's why I've got the big black arrow there to the right. Finally then we just look at the gap between the two reductions which is symbol symbolised with the E cell here. A bigger gap means that the EMF has increased a reduced gap means that the EMF has decreased and in this example the EMF has increased because the gap has also increased. The final factor is the effect of temperature. Most E-cell reactions are exothermic. An increase in temperature then, according to Le Chatelier's principle, will move the equilibrium towards the endothermic reaction to oppose the change blah -de blah Moving the equilibrium backwards however decreases the EMF and it makes the value become nearer to zero. This makes sense because the further forward you are the more positive you are so if you're moving the equilibrium backwards you're going back to zero. And that's it for the conditions of the cells.